But yes, that is the poster for my upcoming feature film, Lilith, hanging on the wall behind me. How kind of you to notice. We're going to talk about something else today. We're going to do things a little different. I finally recovered from Hereditary and I've been offline for a few weeks. So in order to catch up on what I've missed, I'm going to do two quick reviews for the price of one. Ready? Go. Hey Jackson! Are you in there? Where are they, Pritchard? They ain't here. Devil's Gate is directed by Clay Staub. It stars Milo Ventimiglia, Amanda Schul, and Sean Ashmore, and it tells the story of a young FBI agent investigating the disappearance of a mother and her son in, I think, Wyoming, and then Aliens. I'm gonna be really quick with this one, guys. I mean, I've never had a film give me so little to work with the way that Devil's Gate did. It's not good, it's not overtly terrible, it's just so, so lazy. And every single thing about it made me feel that every single person involved was just there to get paid. The entire movie felt like an extended episode of The X-Files, and I don't mean that in a good way. It's convoluted as hell, and it's just so boring. I'll give it points for being nicely shot, as in the shot composition was nice. The creature effects were all practical, and for the most part they looked pretty good. And the creature design themselves is actually really inventive and unique. Now remember that thing I said about it being nicely shot? Throw that out the window because it's ugly as hell to look at. The entire film is just not color graded and it's all washed out and gray and ugly. It looks like the film itself was just released with the raw footage with no actual color correction done at all. Everything is desaturated to hell and given the setting of the American Midwest it leaves you with this really unappealing palette of murky grays and browns and it's super gross to look at. The acting across the board ranges from trying way too hard to not trying at all. The plot, I honestly couldn't even tell you what this movie was about. It's so convoluted and ridiculous and it just felt like it was going into my head and immediately out and given the fact that this movie was released in January, it feels fitting. I'm going to say that Devil's Gate is soulless. If you like The X-Files, check it out. If not, I would say skip it. Fuck it. On to Fashionista. If you're a man that loves women, how could you not care about what caresses their body? What gives shape to their femininity? Fashionista is directed by Simon Rumley. It stars Amanda Fuller, Ethan Embry, Eric Balfour, and Alex Esso. And it is hands down one of the strangest film viewing experiences I've ever had. It tells the story of April, a fashion obsessed clothing store owner who discovers her husband is cheating on her. And what follows is a two hour descent into madness in the vein of Inland Empire. And it left me feeling a variety of emotions. Like I said, this is one of the more bizarre viewing experiences I've ever had in that I started off hating this movie. Like, for the first 20 minutes or so, I could not stand it. I was considering turning it off. It was the kind of art house garbage that people talk about when they say a film is pretentious, and not in a good way. And then around the 30 minute mark, something happened that really made me start appreciating it to some degree. Sure, it wasn't exploring its themes well, but the vibrant and poppy color palette and the non-linear storytelling of it all at least made it something of a spectacle to watch. And then by the last five minutes of this film, something happened that made me really appreciate it overall as an art piece. And I ended up really liking it. Sure, it has its flaws, but its statements about consumerism and self-image and sanity are pretty poignant, and they're important things to talk about in today's society. Sure, some of its themes are better explored than others, and I really would have loved for them to delve into the, the overall fetishism of her materialism a little bit more. And I really can't stand looking at Eric Balfour's stupid fucking face. But as a whole, I really applaud Rumley for crafting a film that explores really prevalent societal themes in an interesting avant-garde way that feels really unrestrained and feels wholly his own. It's definitely not for everybody, and I have no doubt in my mind that there are some people who will watch this and dismiss it as pretentious art house garbage and hate it. But for those of you who appreciate art house films and like to sit down and mull over a film in your head after it ends, I feel like you'll get something out of this that's pretty special, and for those people, I would recommend it. It's a nice artsy think piece that says quite a bit about mental health and our consumerist society, and I'm going to say the fashionista is solid. Definitely check it out if you're into that sort of thing. If you find any of the stuff I described in this little quickie to be worthy of checking out, 
give it a watch. It's free on Amazon Prime right now. I would recommend it for the people who are into that type of film. For the rest of you who can't stand that sort of shit, I would definitely recommend you skip it. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, click down there and like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> and uh, my trailer for Lilith is out online right now. I'll post the link in the description if you're curious to check it out. It's going to be coming soon, hopefully. We're in the middle of post-production. It's a lot of work, but it's coming. Rest assured. Thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I will see you all very soon. I want you to remember that no matter what happens tonight, this is all just an elaborate game.